Perched just above the Arctic Circle, Hotel Svart is set to become the world's first energy positive hotel, often referred to as an eco powerhouse. By energy positive, we mean that the structure will generate more energy than it consumes during both its operational phase and construction. The ultimate aim is to create a carbon neutral architectural marvel. But is even this amazing Norwegian hotel truly sustainable? I mean, the guests still have to fly or cruise to this remote fjord in Norway to get to it. And that's a big piece of the sustainability puzzle. As an industry, we're spending a lot of time and money on solving travel's footprint. But what's the real impact of what we're doing? And are we even speaking about it in the right way? I'm Doug Lansky, and this is Rethinking Tourism. As my travel writer colleague, Juliet Kinsman, likes to say, sustainable travel is like teenage sex. Everyone's talking about it, but not many are actually doing it. And those who are, aren't likely doing it so well. And the same applies to the travelers. Just look at the TripAdvisor survey that told us 70% of travelers say that sustainable travel is important to them. And in that very same study, 75% of the same people also admitted they don't even know what sustainable travel really means. Other studies show that travelers, many who are the same ones who said sustainability is important, use more water when they travel and don't recycle as often. The media does a good job at building up the problem, but doesn't quite put the solutions in perspective. Here's what I mean. The sustainable travel industry is booming, driven mainly by consumer demand. Travelers actively seeking ways to minimize their footprint and maximize positive ways that they can impact distant destinations they visit. So now more travelers are looking to help the planet while still enjoying their vacation. And now some businesses in the tourism industry are introducing eco-friendly ideas that let travelers tackle climate change head on. NBC News correspondent Jesse Kirsch explains. Aboard the new Viking Octantis, you'll find creature comforts like a spa and plenty to eat. But there's no casino or acrobatics on this cruise ship. The big draw here, a microscope. We're gathering evidence to protect the planet. Viking science and sustainability chief tells me his team's tackling that lofty challenge with all of this. A fleet which he says includes military-grade boats, cameras, water sampling, and more. They've even got not one, but two submarines. Are we really going to save the planet by taking a cruise ship with a spa and a submarine instead of a cruise ship with a spa and a water slide? Probably not. Until we come up with some breakthrough way to power airplanes, flying is still the ecological elephant in the room. If we fly five hours in economy, we're going to need to somehow reuse or not use almost a thousand hotel towels to make up for that flight. And that's the main thing we're being asked to do once we land. We could take a bike instead of an Uber or choose a van that says EcoTour over one that doesn't. But all of that is a drop in the ocean compared to our flying footprint. I'm not saying that biking or EcoTours of any of those things are bad. They aren't. And we should keep doing them. And hotels and destinations should keep improving their ground game. I'm just saying it's not really sustainable. And part of the problem is that sustainable tourism has an absolutist ring to it. Like you're either sustainable or you're not. It doesn't allow for much middle ground. And most of what we have today is middle ground. If I'm eating an ice cream and using a little wooden spoon and one of those little biodegradable cups, that's certainly better than using a plastic spoon and plastic cup. But it probably uses ingredients that require energy, water, transport, perhaps even fertilizer. In other words, it's not entirely sustainable, but it's certainly more sustainable than the plastic cup version. So clearly the company should get credit for doing better and we consumers should get some credit for making more eco choices. But if we're being honest with ourselves, we're not really being fully sustainable. So instead of striving for an almost impossible perfection and then mislabeling our failure to meet it, how about let's lower the bar about what we call this. Instead of sustainable, it's more sustainable-ish or sustainishable. It's really the thoughtful act of just doing better. It's a bit like when doctors say they're practicing medicine. We need a word or phrase that says we're constantly learning and implementing new best practice. And then instead of putting some green sticker on our door that says we met the bare minimum of compliance and kicking up our feet and relaxing, we need to actually be learning and implementing best practice. Much like democracy, sustainability, I mean, 
sustainability is going to be a work in progress for the foreseeable future. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel to get commentary on all the latest travel news.